Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Trusted Advisor Show. My name is Rob Jacobin, and I'm your host. And today I'm joined again by the, our two co hosts, Ryan Staten and Devin Walsh with Staten Walsh. And uh, today is part two of our six part series for business continuity planning success. And uh, this particular part is kind of plays off the last episode where we talked about uh, how to set up how to properly set up your business continuity planning committee. So that means, let's recap real quickly, that means setting up the key stakeholders that you are going to make part of your business continuity planning uh, program and your strategy. Uh, That also includes bringing in your trusted advisors, anyone who's part of your fortress of those relationships that can basically contribute in a positive way to your business continuity planning success. So in this particular episode, we want to cover the next part, which is this is going to be part two, which is better understanding the risks and exposures. So this will include basically how to conduct a business impact analysis of your business. So this is a very, very critical step because every business is very unique. So this particular step you will go into, and we'll talk about this with, with Ryan and Devin here, you guys can start to get into the, the details of what goes into a business impact analysis and, and how does that tie in with all the different moving parts and the responsibilities of each of the major stakeholders that are part of your committee. So guys, uh, if you want to get into the details, Ryan, where would someone start on this particular step in our series on better understanding what the risks, the exposures, and how do you, how do you capture all these things in a business? So I, I think that the simplest way to get, get things kicked off in that stage is now that you've established your, your planning committee and your people around you, um, sitting down at a table and actually going through the exercise of identifying what, like you mentioned, what your threats are, ranking things like probability of those threats, ranking the severity of those threats. It's really important to kind of do all three of those pieces together. Uh, And the reasoning is that, uh, you know, quite simply, things that aren't a high probability of success like COVID-19, which, you know, obviously we're all going through right now, had a much larger impact on a lot of businesses that weren't prepared for it, but it was a really low probability threat. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that, and we do this in our business too, and we help a lot of our business owners gauge this as part of their planning committees, but um, having all the advisors that know how to identify different risks to your business based on their areas of expertise, CPAs cover tax risks, people like yourself cover insurable risks like fire damages and, you know, um, not steal your thunder. I'll let you get into that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. But people like us, we talk about financial risk. We talk about risk to the continuation of your business if whatever, for whatever reason, one of those threats is you not being there anymore. So those are all things at a high level that we like to address. And it's really comprehensive. It's not a process that you accomplish in a one hour board meeting. It's probably something that occurs over time, but you really want to dig in deep on what those are, what the severity of those threats are. And then ultimately putting together a concise action plan based on knowing your operations and knowing your threats and matching up your contingencies to make sure that anything that happens on that list, low probability, high probability, high severity, low severity, wherever it falls on the spectrum, that you're ready and you're prepared so that your business, as much as possible, doesn't skip a beat. Yeah. And interestingly, you can do, and this is you know kind of in my wheelhouse, is When you're looking at this from a risk management standpoint, uh, you can also, as part of that, you can incorporate a cost benefit analysis because you're right. When you're looking at the various exposures and the probabilities of something to occur, the bottom line is at the end of the day, you need to be prepared for any potential threat or exposure such as COVID-19. That's just one. But I mean, I'm talking about emergency response planning and having certain safety and risk management initiatives in place. Devin, though, this is why we always talk about when you have the key stakeholders and this is where the relationship part comes in that is so critical to success. And in, in describing 
in going into more detail about what Ryan just mentioned, this is why we believe that is so important, number one, to have the experts surrounding you who already have the expertise and the know-how and the relationships to help you get to that end goal. And whenever I look at, uh, and I'll let you answer this on, on the uh, relationship side, when I always think about a, an issue or a set of issues, I always like to, the way my brain works and, and what, what we've been successful doing is reverse engineering the process. So understanding what the threat and exposure is, then reverse engineering and bringing in the various experts and those trusted advisors with the relationships that you have, bring them in and consult with them on how to get you to that end goal. So why is it so important to bring in those various stakeholders, especially the experts who that's their, that's their niche, that's their area of expertise that you need to enlist their resources and their help? No, I think you both made some great points, Rob. And Ryan mentioned a couple of things about probability and the impact of certain risks. Uh, he mentioned something about it might be a low probability of it happening. It could be a very high impact to your business. Mm -hmm. So knowing those things and having your key partners and trust advisors point that out to you. So, hey, this might not be it's like, like a virus happened, like COVID-19 happened. Perfect example. Nobody expects this to happen, but an extremely high, high impact to businesses. Yep. So having something like that and be able to tie that and having the trust advisor show them, hey, we got to plan for this and, pre and prep for this. So once we have these things in place and seeing what the probability of them are and the, and the actual impact is and testing it um, and having each partner kind of go through that and, and look at that, um, it's, it's key. Yeah. And then the stakeholders, everybody has their area of expertise. So that's why it's important to bring everybody in and basically say, okay, guys, here's here's our problem or here's our uh, here's the situation. Here are the exposures. These are the things that we all agree on that are unique to our business. And, and therefore, you know, I might have a safety uh, director. I might have my bring in my HR director who basically is responsible for dealing with personnel issues. If that is a potential exposure or risk, which in the COVID situation, it is because you had a lot of people who were furloughed. You have a lot of HR related issues um, you need to bring in the experts. I mean, we we have relationships with attorneys who specialize in employment law, employment practices. And again, that's another thing that I identify whenever I sit down with a client is I look at, okay, employment practices, liability coverage. Do you have the right coverage? Do you have the right limits? So that's why it's so critical to bring in someone to say, okay, guys, let's let's assess the situation. Let's look at all those factors, let's bring it together and let's prioritize them. Ryan, is that really the way, you know, once you have your list, let's, so let's take a real situation. Uh, take COVID-19, for example, uh, you know, or take the, the priority that we typically see as professionals of those exposures. How do you then go through the process of prioritizing those risks and then identifying what the next step is to, to basically uh, identify and take action on or execute on those things? Yeah, so I think it's important to go back to and something I said previously about knowing your operations. I think once you identify your risks, you really have to do an audit of how the day-to-day -day works in your business. Um, because part of the severity or the, the kind of scaling of what's most important in my business and the priority should go to the things that are going to um, your vital activity, kind of your do or die things that have to happen on a daily basis for you to really be in business. Any of those risks that would directly impact that, I would say that's number one on the list because you want to be able to, you know, there are businesses, service-based businesses in particular that have still been able to operate in a pretty, still pretty efficient fashion. Like ours is one of them where we can still work with clients. We can still meet with people and we haven't had a huge interruption in that because of you know technology like zoom and virtual meeting um but i think for a, a another type of business that uses other vendors as well it's also important to not just bring your trusted experts and advisors to the table i know we talk a lot about that but what are the other businesses the b2b that you have in your business that would affect your operation 
Who are your suppliers? Have they seen your business continuity plan? Do you know what theirs is? Um, we were just talking to, uh, Devin was talking to a, a business owner the other day who is changing their supply chain and they're moving it a little closer to home to make it easier to get access to certain things um, as opposed to having it halfway across the country. Uh, there, you know, that is something that if someone is greatly affected, if your supply chain, for example, was in New York, one of the largest impacted areas during this time, uh, you may have had a hard time getting with your hands on what you needed. Now, you could have been in Texas and open sooner than most and ready to operate full capacity, but your supply chain is interrupted. Your suppliers aren't there to provide you with what you need. So that's equally as important. So when I'm talking about prioritizing, I think it's when we talk to businesses about business continuity in general, because it's important to part of our process of building the business and ultimately transitioning it to uh, someone else in the form of a sale. Um, that piece is just as important. And we prioritize based on what are your operations? How can these risks directly affect those operations, whether it's people or processes? And then how do we mitigate against that, whether it's using some kind of tool, insurance policy, maybe a written policy, manuals, things like that. So that's, that's how we, we mitigate against that. And I think we're going to go into that in our next show. About once we've established what these are, we're going to talk about how to offset them and maybe uh, reduce that risk moving forward. Um, but that's important. It's important to understand how everything affects your operations and who are the key people that are a part of those operations. Yeah. And I think for the sake of this particular episode, because you're right, we'll get into later episodes. We're going to talk about how to mitigate that risk. Do you want to transfer that risk? Do you want to retain that risk? How do you prepare for those things? Those are all conversations that you definitely need to have with your most trusted advisors, whether it be um, a combination of your insurance professional, your CPAs, your attorneys, your financial uh, financial planners. A anyone who's involved in those major decisions needs to be at the table having those conversations with you. And it really doesn't matter whether you're a big, big or small operation. Um, and and you know, by the way, you're so right when you talk about. The most important thing is prioritizing. So for the sake of this particular episode, talking about identifying those risks and exposures, reverse engineering, and then prioritizing which ones do we need to pay the most attention to. And here's the other thing. And I, and I also want to get this elephant out of the room. You might come up with 20 different things, but here's the problem. You can't execute on 20 different things. You really, and that's why it's so critical to prioritize because, you know, I would say, take your top five, take your top three. What are the most significant priorities for you right now that you can take action on that's going to have the greatest impact, both maybe short and long term, but it's going to be different for every business. So Devin, I mean, that's probably the most important step is once you identify those, you have to prioritize them. Uh, that's key, Rob, because if you have something that's uh, low probability and is also low risk, there's not there's no need to spend much time on there. But if you have something that's low probability and very high risk, that would be extremely impactful to your business. You need a plan for that. You need to go into that in depth and really test that out, whether it's high probability, low probability, medium probability, whatever it is. Like you said, prioritize, whether it's five things, 10 things, and still have a plan for the ones that are low probability just in case because that's still all of them will have some type of impact on your business but really really driving in and focusing on the ones whether it's a low probability or high probability what are the things that no matter what you want to have a impact in your business and you really need to have a plan on those and test those plans i never want to get into testing at a later episode but having those things and being ready uh plan in place that you turn on switch no matter what and those things and that um continuity plan goes into effect Absolutely. And I don't want to get too much in the weeds because we can actually uh, get very granular with how an analysis and business impact analysis is performed. I mean, you can actually get into once you have everything prioritized, uh, you can then start identifying and put, apply metrics to, uh, like you said, Devin, probability versus, you know, what is the potential severity would be of these? And you can actually plot them on graphs. There's various different methodologies that you can actually use to perform a cost-benefit analysis. For example, you may decide, you may come up with 
hey, listen, we need to invest in a piece of equipment or we need to invest in a certain technology. Uh, and then you would then go through the proper analysis to decide, okay, what's the payback? What's the, um, what's the cost? And what's the investment? What's the, you know, how do you amortize that kind of thing? All those different factors come into play. And, and again, we don't want to get into too much detail on that, but Ryan, those are the kind of, the reason I'm bringing that up is because this is the kind of thought process that it takes in order to be successful at doing this, because you can have the greatest plan in the world. You can write these things down and can prioritize, but then you have to go through the paces and you have to go through the process yeah. of identifying and properly mitigating those risks. Yeah. Execution is always key in any plan. Um, like you said, you can really get into the weeds on that, but I think this process and probably why a lot of businesses don't go down this road is it can seem overwhelming. What I would say for any size business is that um, you don't have to go at this whole process alone. The point of getting the committee together is obviously number one to help with that, but also, you know, if you want to offload this and, and have your people concentrate on something else, they you know the money making activities of the business. There are plenty of operational consultants out there in the world that will do stuff like this for you, obviously for a fee. But, um, you know, it's you have to weigh what your time's worth, too. I mean, if you want to pay a professional to come in and kind of handle this whole process and consult start to finish and building this for you, that's certainly available to the business world. So don't feel like just because we're telling you that these are the steps that you don't need to, that can't be one of the experts on your planning committee is someone who can kind of take the lead and steer this ship from start to finish. That's perfectly available. Um, I, a little bit of a, a plug to, you know, I, I've, sat, I've gone to a lot of conferences and one in particular, there was an operational consultant, he's kind of a business consultant by the name of Steve Harville that's based out of Texas. And he talks about how the human brain works and we really can't attack more than three tasks at a time and, mm -hmm. and do them effectively. Yep. And so his great example of that was one of his big clients, I believe it's Pixar or, um, and he went into their offices one day and they have, you know, plastered on the wall. These are our three must accomplish things for 2019, 2020. And he went into the board and he asked, you know, how many, how many of those have you checked off this year? How many years? Um, do you get through all that stuff? And they said, well, we never have. And so his point was, then those aren't three must accomplish things for the year. Your so if you're not going to, and, and there's been many other companies that, you know, they have their 10 things that they want to check off their list. And so his whole point was they had the right idea. They just didn't have the execution in place. Yep. Um, and so that's, you know, to, to summarize this whole thing. It's about getting the right people, whether it's people in your business or bringing in outside people to help consult you on this. And then it's about getting the proper plan of execution in place. And then in the next step, talking about now we've identified how do we mitigate? What's the process of doing that? Who are the professionals to help? And really just kind of summarizing, crunching all this down into one actionable path to getting this done so that in the future, the only thing you have to do is monitor and maintenance. So, Excellent. Um, yeah. It, it can be as simple as that sometimes. <laughs> no, no, you're right. And, and I, and I, that's one of the reasons why I brought that up is because even in my own life, in my own career, sometimes I have this to-do list that's a mile long, but you look at it and say, wait a minute, what are my top priorities? They might be my top income producing activities, or they might be my, my, the, the ones that are going to give me the most value or actually pass the most value on to my clients. Those things you identify and take action on them, Rather, I'd rather accomplish three major priorities than have a list of 10 different things. And at the end of the day saying, what did I just accomplish? I, don't, I, I mean, I, I don't even know. You, I'm sure everyone has had those days, but this process is no different. You don't want to overwhelm yourself. You want to stay laser focused on your mission and your purpose. And, and that's why we're going through this. So just recapping as we're bringing as we're, as we're uh, bringing this to a conclusion, and that is, we talked about last, last episode, we talked about the first step. The first step is identifying the major stakeholders, getting, you know, getting your uh, business continuity planning committee in place, um, and identifying those key, key individuals and trusted advisors. And then this step, this step is basically, you know, 
how to conduct the initial business impact analysis and start to come up with a list of priorities, whether that be exposures, threats, risks uh, in those various areas. So guys, listen, if you have gotten value out of what we're sharing with you, please consider whether you're listening or watching on our YouTube channel, please consider subscribing because you know we are going to continue to put out valuable information. Um, and also we want to get feedback from you. You know, we want to know what things that, you know, keep you up at night. What things do you want us to be talking about that are going to make a positive impact on your business? Um, as we're, as we're wrapping up here, guys, what do we have in store? And this is for either one of you two. What do we have in store for the next episode as uh, part three, just to give uh, folks here a taste of what's coming? Yeah, so the third step, now that we've identified what the risks and the threats are to the business, now the next step is figuring out, all right, how do we prevent that? In the event that those happen, how do we mitigate or reduce uh, that risk if possible? And then um, basically making the effect on the business or dampen the effect on the business in the event that one of these threats were actually to occur, um, just like we've gone through. So we're going to talk about different strategies to do that different people that you're going to want to consult with potentially and bring into your, into, into the fold to help you build that risk mitigation plan. And then um, moving on to the uh, next steps of actually taking all of this and really starting to put it together and into a formal plan. Yeah, this is all really great stuff. And you guys are adding such enormous value for business owners, especially, you know, I, I know it was, we're looking backwards a lot of us now wish that we would have had these things in place, but guess what? This is probably not the first time this is going to happen in our, in our lifetime. Um, there are going to be other things, maybe not to the magnitude of COVID-19, but there are other things that could happen inside your business that you must be prepared for. So that's why we're doing this series, this six part series. And again, we've gone through the first two parts and, uh, you know, looking forward to the next phase, which is the next uh, step, like you said, Ryan, uh, we're going to cover that in our next episode. So, hey, thanks a lot, guys. I really appreciate your time and uh, looking forward to the next episode. And we'll see you guys all again soon. Awesome. Thanks, Rob. Yep. Take care. Thanks, Rob. 